My name is Gayla Benefield, and I've lived in Libby, Montana for over 60 years. During the 1950s, my father, Pearlie Vautlin, accepted a job working at the local vermiculite mine. In 1962, W.R. Grace purchased the mine and properties. My father's health began failing as early as 1965, but the local doctors diagnosed it simply as heart disease. They prescribed nitroglycerin tablets to ease the pain. By 1969, it became apparent that Pearlie could no longer work, even though the company had given him a less strenuous job. In 1971, my father was diagnosed with asbestosis and lived 18 months, dying at age 62. His death left me terribly angry, and I began making inquiries about mine safety and the health of the miners. When I started, I was working at home. I had five children, the youngest of whom were twins, born in 1971. But I was also secretary to the construction union, Local 1334, which supplied all of the workers for the Libby Dam site. My work made me deeply aware of worker safety issues. Because I was deeply involved in the union, I was also able to press my questions personally with both elected officials and state officials all the way up to the governor. I continued my inquiries through my mother's diagnosis for asbestosis in 1985 and her death in 1996. As hard as I tried, I couldn't really get public attention focused on the problem. Finally, in 1999, after all my years of contacting elected officials, agencies, and union officials, I met Andrew Schneider, an investigative reporter for the Seattle Post-Intelligentsier. Andy had come to Montana to do an investigation of the state's 1872 mining laws, and he ran into a mutual friend who told him about me. Andy was the perfect person to listen to my story. He knew about W.R. Grace's involvement in chemical dumping in Woburn, Massachusetts, a story that formed the basis for the book and movie called A Civil Action. Andy read my evidence and investigated further. From Andy's work came the first national press story about Libby, Montana, on November 18, 1999. That story and its aftermath rocked the world. It changed the government's focus on asbestos exposure, not only in the workplace, but in the home and surrounding areas. We discovered that Libby, Montana has the highest mesothelioma rate in the nation, the highest rate of lung abnormalities among the population, and the highest death rate due to asbestos exposure. Currently, there are over 3,000 people diagnosed with asbestos-related disease through the local Center for Asbestos-Related Disease with the average of three to five new diagnoses per week. Since I've been diagnosed with bladder cancer, I've had to curtail most of my work to bring justice to the victims of this silent exposure. I still work with the victims themselves, and I feel confident that the people I have worked with over the years are really carrying the banner forward for workers' health and safety. People diagnosed with ARD have been speaking out the loudest of all. I have also learned that if you want justice, it's important to be in the newspaper. Local coverage may not be enough. There were two local AP wire stories during the same month when Andy Schneider broke the story nationally, and no one picked them up. Without national news coverage, we could have never moved forward.